Hey, Bob WP here, and welcome to WordPress Event Talk at Do The Woo Podcast Show. This week's a little bit different because earlier this month, we were a community partner of WooSesh, an online event for WooCommerce builders. And each of those three days of this online event, myself and some of my hosts joined Brian from WB Sessions and the creator of WooSesh to recap the day. This first one with Brian and host Robert and Zach started out a little rough as there were some audio issues Hey, nothing I've ever experienced before. Yeah, right. But, you know, a little bit of editing, getting things fixed. It's here for you to listen to. The day started with the State of the Woo and moved into several other sessions. So listen to the three of them not only recap the day, but share their own insights into a broad range of topics. Hello, and welcome back yet again, everyone. I am still your host, Brian Richards, and I'm still excited that you're here. And now, flanking either side of me, if I can center myself in the frame here, we have Robert Jacoby and Zach Stepik. I'm going to take just a quick uh, moment here to introduce each of them, and then we're going to get started on our recap. So, uh, for those of you who are unaware, both Zach and Robert are distinguished hosts for the Do The Woo podcast, and each of our broadcasts this week are going to culminate in one of these live recaps. And I am very excited to be working with them just like last year. Uh, Robert, for those of you who haven't met him, is an ambitious participant and contributor to open source hosting and infrastructure communities. And over the past 20 years, he served in multiple roles with Joomla, including president of Open Source Matters. He's a member of the Make WordPress hosting group and a contributor at large for ICANN. And all of this only scratches the surface of the things he's done over the last 20 years. Recently, Robert served as director of WordPress at Cloudways and led the charge to their acquisition by DigitalOcean. And today, he provides industry analysis and commentary at robertjacoby.com. And then Zach, on the other hand, serves as the client enablement manager at Convezio. Uh, And he endeavors to help e-commerce store owners run more profitable businesses. In particular, he specializes in creating faster and more scalable e-commerce solutions. He places a heavy focus on business objectives and manages away the complexity in technical architecture to meet those objectives rather than the other way around. He's a pretty great guy to work with, which is true for both of them. So today we had, what, five, six sessions before this? We had, uh, we kicked things off with State of the Woo with our opening keynote from uh, eight different members from the WooCommerce team, then Leanna Patch led us through nine ways to write higher converting copy without sounding sleazy. Emphasis on the without sounding sleazy part. She was amazing and really good at avoiding that common problem. Uh, Sean Conklin gave us building standards, the block theme generation. Tim Nash taught us how not to woo a hacker. And then just moments ago, Brad Williams and Phil Wiley taught us how to rescue disgruntled clients. Uh, Really cool stuff that uh, amazingly stacked together and sort of complemented one another to build sort of this comprehensive picture of, you know, how to be out there in the world. Uh, you know, I listen to everyone. I'm just like w- waiting for that magical woo.com experience to happen. That, uh, really just takes a, a, a big, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, right fist, left fist, depending on what hand you, uh, uh, Donald use uh, to uh, Shopify.com. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I think Woo Express is definitely a stepping stone on yep. that journey. Uh, the new, you know, the new product experience, the new store builder experiences, uh, the focus on on block themes and uh, on enabling us with a, a number of blocks, a plethora or even a cornucopia of blocks for WooCommerce. Oh my gosh, I think we're jumping like six, uh, five or six sessions uh, ahead, you know, talking about blocks, but yeah, absolutely. Well, and they they were mentioned during the uh, during the state of the Woo as well. There's over a hundred blocks now uh, in WooCommerce core, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. And then there's all these patterns they've been working on uh, to make it easier for a store builder to you know, build a store that has a varied display. You know, we're not in the days of storefront where everything looked like storefront, right? 
we're we're past that now and we're to a point where people can build something that really fits the personality of their brand and uh without having to have a developer do all of that work oh absolutely which which is really nice to see in the world and the fact that you know pretty much most of it is open source and everyone can take advantage of it and and run with it oops unmuted myself there uh that that to me has been uh one of the more interesting things to observe over the last uh what's it been 15 no not 15 years uh for a while anyway 11 years i think of um 12 years of woocommerce history is how anybody could step up and set up a hosted e-commerce competitor and nobody did for a long time and then almost uh, uniformly across the board, so many different teams unlocked it at like the same time over the last couple of years. And now we have a proliferation of hosted e-commerce solutions. Absolutely. I mean, you see it at, you know, GoDaddy, you see it at uh, Newfold, I guess, which would be Bluehost. Uh, you see that, uh, you know, Nexus, uh, you see it, you know, all these folks are like, wait a minute, we can actually build fully hosted WooCommerce solutions. Sorry to leave you all with some dead air there as I was uh, oh, getting wait, the audio that? situation straightened back out. Um, and, oh, no, we lost Zach. Uh, <laughs> Is he in his car again? Yeah, I wonder. Uh, well, I'll talk Zach, over here to, to nothing for a second. Hey. Um, there we go. That was Okay. You know, there's nothing better than doing it live. I mean, forget all the scripted right. you know, or pre-recorded stuff. We're going to do it live. <laughs> yeah, it's going, going live. And, uh, my, my internet connection at home is going to stop working, and I'm going to jump to my phone and use my hotspot just in the middle of us doing this. Yeah, so well, that, that happens from time to time. It does. It does. At least we recovered. Um, Again, we like yeah, to doing it live is... Wonders. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so the the state of the woo was great. Favorite part of the whole day for me, every the whole conference every year, is hearing from the woo team and getting that insight. Um, but I have to say that I thought it would be hard to top that today. And then we got into the session about how to write higher converting copy. Nice. And yep. I just started laughing and I didn't stop for most of the session. Like I was engaged from start to finish. That's a rare skill. Yeah. Uh, Leanna basically delivered a masterclass, not only in how to write good copy, but also how to deliver an engaging presentation. And maybe unsurprising to some, those two skills go hand in hand, right? Good yeah. delivery is good writing. And so that common thread uh, was sort of shown throughout, not just in what she was talking about, but also how she was talking about it. It was a treat to get to host that and bring that to everyone today. It really was a great session. And you know, I mentioned in, in the Woosesh Slack, which by the way, if if you're watching this and you're not in the Woosesh Slack, um, you're probably missing like half the conference because <laughs> conversations that happen in that Slack channel add more depth to every session. Yeah, every and time you so see one of our heads turn, you know, one direction or another, it's because we're like, oh my gosh, what did someone just say? Uh, you're a hundred percent correct, Zach. Uh, there's so much like, you know. It, it's like the hallway track for, you know, the sessions, you know, which happens at every conference and everyone should be taking advantage of it and jumping on. I would have to yeah. agree wholeheartedly, not just because it's uh, it's my Slack instance that I'm inviting everyone to join, but in particular, because as Zach said, you're missing out on a significant portion of the event by not being in Slack. And I realize not everybody uses Slack or enjoys being on Slack. So let me give you a 30 second pitch on 
uh, on why you should do it anyway. And that's because the connections that attending conferences enables is unparalleled in terms of sort of like a multiplying factor for your life. I can point to so many different amazing things that have happened for me because of an incidental conversation that I happen to be part of at an event. And while those are largely physical events, it's not exclusively physical events. And um, I found that Slack, like the post status Slack is one of my favorite haunts because oh, there's yeah. so many amazing people hanging out there. And, mm -hmm. uh, there are so many people, amazing people who drive by and hang out here, uh, in the WP session Slack for Woo Sesh, for Word Sesh, all of our speakers, most of our sponsors, fellow attendees. It's incredible the kind of conversations that we can get caught up in over there. Yeah. The, the stress is not screwing it up, right? <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. Exactly. Zach, I'm just pointing at Zach. <laughs> of course. I mean, I already, tr I already tried once. So, um, so yeah, you know, that, that session, I just, I found a whole bunch of value in, uh, in what Leanna had to say about writing copy. It was, it was probably the best content focused session that I've seen in a long time. Um, and then we got into block themes with Sean and that was, that was great, uh, talking about, how you know our our building standards have changed, right? As we move into a world where you know we're trying to embrace Gutenberg more, uh, and honestly, it's it's light years ahead of where it was when we first started. Um, and it's really cool. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's really cool to see it uh, evolve and see the tools evolve around it. Um. And, you know, just getting that primer on how to start from scratch with a block theme and build, you know, build something out from nothing um, and seeing how many, you know, how, how much fewer files, how many fewer files are needed for a block theme compared to uh, a traditional WordPress theme was pretty eye opening. Yeah. Oh my god, it's it's night and day. Sorry, Brian. I, you know, I, I'm a, so I really came into WordPress just as the switch from classic to Gutenberg happened. And uh, I did I did not understand why people were wedded to classic at all. And being able to, you know, work with blocks in, in WooCommerce is, it, it, I mean, it just makes sense. I mean, we, we don't need to be sitting here doing 1960s data entry when we can, you know, uh, you know, pull up blocks that, you know, access the database with all of our products, with all of our inventory, uh, 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 yeah, it's, for me, it's like, you know, literally night and day. Yeah, I well, yeah. I would agree with that. And I think the, the reason that uh, that so many of us, myself included, were still stuck not embracing blocks is, you know, for the first couple of years, it was touch and go because there, there just wasn't a lot out there in terms of documentation or practice design, et cetera. Um, and even only recently, right, we gained block patterns and yep. uh, and some of the more nifty things that the block editor can do. But in large part, it was just people are comfortable with what they know, right? And yeah. well, I know how to do this powerful stuff without blocks. How could I possibly replicate this with blocks? And now we have so many fantastic examples of how to do exactly that and more still coming, right? To call back to the state of the woo, a third of what they were showing off were like, here are some amazing blocks that we've made. Here's the new product editing experience that's yep. sort of rich with uh, block integration. Here are some incredible new theme opportunities that are possible now, thanks to blocks and so on. So like we're still getting, we haven't even reached the best stuff yet. Uh, is completely agree. And I, I'm like reaching back to, you know, last, you know, so 2022 state of the word where Matt talks about, you know, how Gutenberg and blocks and patterns, you know, is the future of how we work with and manage content on the internet. WooCommerce being, you know, to a huge degree, the most valuable piece because there's uh, financial transactions going on all the time. So, you know, how do we enable that and get the most people comfortable with it without ever thinking of short codes and any kind of code. The word C-O-D-E should never exist uh, for most folks, period. 
Yeah. Zach, I stomped on you and that uh, earlier. Zach stunned because he was like, I oh, how can you not say code? <laughs> well, no, you see, the thing is, like, we used to uh, have to use hooks and filters to change the order of presentation on a screen in, in WooCommerce. And now you can just drag a block up. Yes. Yes. It's but amazing. The, Love it. Yeah. The experience is way different. And it's just enabling, it's it's opening up the ecosystem to enable more people to design and create stores without requiring specialists. And that's great. That's what we've always been moving toward. Yeah. I I remember when I first discovered WordPress in 2007, uh, the the part that blew me away because I'd like, I'd heard about it, but I hadn't really bothered looking into it. And then a roommate of mine in college mentioned it. I'm like, nah, I'm not looking to make a blog for this project I'm working on. And then little by little, like I kept noticing the WordPress name show up in the footers of all these different sites that I was freaking powered by WordPress, powered by WordPress. I'm like, Oh, and that, and that those two things aren't at all alike. Neither one of those are blogs. What's going on? So I, I took a deeper look and the, the thing it crystallized for me is that my clients could update the content on their own website without having to call me or send me an email every time they wanted a headline changed or a paragraph changed. Uh, or even if they, they still were not interested in that, right? Like they're not in the business of managing websites. I was, I could do that without shipping a code change. And that was the real sort of powerhouse right there is that I could use it without writing code not just my clients could use it without writing code. And, and so for all the freelancers out there and side gig folk, uh, you get to charge more for the privilege of people having an easier job of dealing with Woo. And I think that's what everyone should be really, you know, on, on that freelance solopreneur side gig side of the universe should be taken away from this. Like I'm providing a value to my customers who can sell more because it's easier for them to sell more yeah, so maybe, maybe I'll charge them a little bit more and the whole ecosystem grows. So uh, you, you're talking probably one of the biggest blocks fans on earth. Um, <laughs> anything that makes the end user's life, whether that's you know that content creator, that inventory manager, whatnot, business owner, uh, is great for everyone. Well, and that's part of what the Do The Woo community is all about, is empowering builders, right? And so that's that's why we're here. Uh, you know, our mission has been to empower builders, and and I like to think of builders not just as people who can click around the WordPress admin, but more as people who are guides, right? They're guides to the end users, the customers who are using tools like WordPress and WooCommerce, and they they are paid guides through this jungle that they'd have to figure out on their own. Absolutely. And that's what, you know, Woosesh is great about is like, you know, here are some guides, here are some trails, you might want to take the trail with a map and a guide, or, you know, here are some starting points where you can, you know, uh, well, I'm going to totally screw up the uh, metaphor, but I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go skiing, and here are some green slopes, blue slopes, black slopes, and, uh, you know, one of these ways is going to be the best for you to go down. Well, and speaking of black slopes, uh, Tim Nash shared a story with us, right? Yep. And that story was definitely a black diamond slope. Uh, <laughs> that, that sounded like uh, it was a very difficult situation to deal with in the moment. And there were a ton of learning opportunities in there for us as as practitioners in, in this space, right? Yeah. Um, First of all, it's very easy for there to be a vulnerability that somebody can exploit, right? All it takes is forgetting to hit that update button for long enough. Or having which, the wrong... Which, that long enough keeps getting shorter and shorter, P.S. It, it really does. And, you know, there are, there are tools out there to help mitigate that. Obviously, we, you know, we heard about one of them, the head of web application firewall, uh, installed that happened to be co-opted by the hacker um in in some ways so or at least disguised to look like it had been right um but 
all of those lessons are important. And as we get into, you know, the e-commerce space more and more as a community, uh, things like this matter more because there's more money on the line than ever before. And we're dealing with things like card skimmers that could steal all of our customers' data. That's a huge problem. So, yeah, it was. I think it's a really good story that um, helps us to understand why these things are so important and how they can hide in plain sight. You mean I, sh- I shouldn't add my credit card into any JavaScript pop-up that appears, right? Uh, no, you, you can. I, I, I mean, prefer. In fact, there's going to be one appearing on your screen thing, Scott got it. <laughs> in a few seconds. And it's going to say credit card security verifier. And that's just that's just for you. Make sure you type that in. Uh, no, uh, Zach, that's uh, a very salient point and uh, almost sounds antithetical to what we were just saying, right? Where we're, the goal of the tools that we're helping develop and the experiences that uh, we as practitioners are helping produce is one that makes it as easy as possible for the people who run the business, who own the business, to take care of their whole web presence without having to be an expert in managing websites. And yet, uh, the opposing force to that are all of the malicious actors Mm -hmm. who are coming for and seeking out exploits. Because for sure, a person who's brand new to putting something on the internet does not bring with them the baggage of the past 20 and 30 years of oh, I got to make sure this is really locked down and I have to constantly be checking against that because uh, as you mentioned, Robert, right, the the time of discovery of the exploit to the exploit being actively maliciously utilized in the wild is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking from yep. months to weeks to days to hours. And so people need to be uh, really fast to stay on top of things, which I guess is another point of credit to all of the managed hosting offerings that exist, like Wood Express, like GoDaddy, like uh, et cetera, where they will do much to help take care of that for you. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, newer day hacks are, you know, everyone wants to pick on like, uh, you know, Word and uh, Woo for being open source. And so, you know, no, it's 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 a target because it's, it's huge and zero day hacks are going to happen everywhere. So you need to rely on your host. You need to rely on security partners that either you're working with or your host is working with. And you want a team or agency of folk that, you know, are managing that for you. So you can worry about, you know, your business and making money as opposed to, you know, worrying about, you know, who's going to break in at, you know, 2 a.m. and, you know, rob the kitty. Yep. And if you don't know if, if this is covered, um, you know, the Woo experts that uh, they mentioned that they're revitalizing yep. the program for a great source uh, to have somebody check and make sure that your host has things covered for you. Make sure that, um, you know, you have the the tools in place to make sure that you're not a victim. Of and, 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 and folks who are freelancers and solopreneurs, they're on it. So, you know, as... Uh, you know, client to those folks, make sure you're, you know, engaging with them. I mean, and then there are obviously, you know, other uh, sort of third party services with uh, developers and security folk that, you know, you can take advantage of as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I get in trouble I, for name dropping, so I'm just going to just say it that, say it that way. <laughs> I, I use a couple plugins myself. If you want recommendations, feel free to reach out to me in the WP session Slack. That's right. That is a perfect. Let, let's let's check that Slack out. What's going? On? Oh boy, it's blown up again. Uh, well, Tim Nash has uh, declared he's the wallet inspector. He has to check your wallet. <laughs> yes, he, he needs to check your wallet. So, Tim, thank you for the the laugh. I enjoyed that. <laughs> um, and Ben Lobo here is reminding everybody that Mind Size has an offer. Uh, if you go to mindsize.com slash woosesh and you can enter a giveaway for a Timbuk two bag. So go ahead and go uh, get a Timbuk two bag if you can and uh, get yourself in for that uh, special that they're offering. Well, that's um, a nice bag. bag. Yes. <laughs> and then back, back before that is a whole bunch of we can't hear Zach or Robert. So 
That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Every, everybody is quick, thankfully, to point out when uh, things are not working, even uh, or probably especially because I'm slow to notice and I'm uh, caught up in the conversation. So thank you to all of you who helped keep me honest here and got me back to flying the plane. Again, the speak. benefit of making sure you're on the Slack, you know, for the next, uh, well, today and the, certainly the next two days to be able to uh, talk to any of us at any time. I mean, that's that's. Mm-hmm. This is the hallway chat uh, that gets things done. Speaking of hallway chats, um, a long time ago uh, at a uh, a host's uh, agency event, there was a conversation that uh, Brad Williams and Kareem Maruki and I had um, about uh, about rescuing disgruntled clients. And uh, it was worded kind of differently in that uh, conversation, a way that I won't share here. Uh, but um, it was really nice to see uh, Brad and Phil going into uh, their experiences with rescuing disgruntled clients and how to handle when a relationship goes off the rails a bit. And so uh, I just want to... <laughs> Ben, you were already famous, man. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to let you drive that one yourself. Uh, like, yeah, we're, we're just going to make everyone famous. So we got Ben, we got Bet. Uh, again, everyone knows Bob Dunn already, so we don't need to say that name. Yeah, Bob's uh, yeah, Bob. Bob. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but this the format of just having a panel with two people who have experience in the trenches of doing exactly that, right? servicing clients things are going to go wrong no matter what you do the best laid plans right they don't always work out the way we want them to so um having both of them as woo experts here to share uh their experiences and how to navigate when things do go wrong um that uh that was really cool it was really nice to to get those insights um, and for the store owners, just like they said in their, in their description of the talk, you know, if you're a store owner and you watch this, uh, it gives you an, an understanding of kind of how we think internally at agencies and how we work with, uh, with you as a store owner and gives you a, a bit of a, a platform from which you can manage your relationship with your agency partners, uh, from, a a place of knowledge, a position of understanding. I was going to add there um, in terms of things absolutely will go wrong. The, the best strategies aren't how do we prevent all possible disasters and shortcomings, though that's a really nice thing to strive towards. The, the better strategy is how are we going to handle any challenges that arise. Um, some event producing friends of mine introduced me to this idea of a pre-mortem, which they would do ahead of the events that they were producing. And I couldn't believe that in you know, 25 years of web development, that idea hadn't occurred to me leading up to a website launch of like, okay, we're going to launch this thing and everything should go fine. But Let's just pretend for a moment that they didn't go fine. What are the things that are likely to go wrong in this? Like, oh, well, the DNS doesn't propagate. Yeah, that's a common one. How are we going to mitigate that? Well, we're going to do the... Oh, well, what happens if like all of the URLs start to 404 because they were you know, pointing to the... Inter- internally referencing the development site and they didn't get cut over when we... Oh, well, let's... Wait, you, you sound like you're speaking from experience there. I mean, there's... Yeah, I don't think you've run into any of those before, have you? <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, I've heard of other people handling situations like this, and I talk to them a lot, and boy, do they never want to re-encounter those situations again. And so, um, ha- going through the mental exercise of a pre-mortem of like, here are all of the things that may go wrong, so what do we do about that? And then, what do we do for the unknowns here? How do we handle problems that we haven't defined? What's, 
what are our steps for sort of troubleshooting and processing through that is such a useful way to keep a cool head when there's an emergency. The known knowns, the known unknowns, and the unknown unknowns. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. My favorite is, have you ever just tested any of these theories? Like, <laughs> oh my goodness, our, you know, our, our droplet goes down or, you know, whatever VM we're using, you know, you know, what's the bed? Uh, how quickly can you restore? How quickly can you get back online? Oh, we have, you know, we have a plan, which is like, you know, 30 pages of what we do and which has never, ever actually been gone through and done it in sort of a real life situation. And, you know, for, for, I mean, we could talk about this for any kind of site, but most importantly for, you know, a WooCommerce site where transactions are critical and you can't be down for, you know, you know, days, hours, or even seconds, uh, you know, what's that recovery process look like? Yeah. And, you know, every site has value to uptime, right? But in a, in an e-commerce site, that value to uptime is a completely different thing. Oh, for sure. Cause it's not just like, oh, you know, I'll take that credit for downtime. No, I, I lost thousands of dollars in that you know, outage or whatever that may be. And uh, yeah. your 30, 50, hundreds of dollars aren't even going to come close to covering that, as well as reputational damage. That was weird, by the way. My microphone was ducking for some reason, and I apologize for that, everybody. Uh, I've fixed it now. <laughs> I was at about a quarter of the volume I was supposed to be for that last little bit. I I, I heard you loud and clear. <laughs> Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, so let me get back to some of my hosting duties here as the host of Woosesh. Uh, I kind of skipped over the fact that you guys are here representing Do The Woo. We talked about it like this much, and then I just right. moved right along. So before we close out, because we are starting to get close to that, could you explain to our dear audience members a little bit about Do The Woo and why why you're here hanging out with us today. Sure. Well, uh, I, Robert, I really want to say, wanna... yeah, well, I want to say because Bob paid us, but we know that's not true. Uh, so Do The Woo oh. uh, has been for, wow, I don't even know how long at this point, 10, 15 years, sort of the uh, authoritative, authoritative um, <laughs> podcast, uh, news engine for information about what's going on with WooCommerce and Bob Dunn, the, the founder of do the woo ha, has kept expanding the amount of topics and sort of almost niches that he covers. So for example, I, I, I work with Robbie Adair of OS training on uh, the agency agency chat side of the universe. So we're always, you know, speaking with, you know, new agencies who just got into Woo agencies that have been there for a number of years, talking about their experiences. We, we, it's almost like a case study once a month about, you know, what an agency and WooCommerce can do on uh, Do the Woo. I know Zach comes at it from a much more technical perspective. Yeah, so on a monthly basis, I host the Woo Dev Chat with Carl Alexander, and we nerd out about the... Uh, the geekiest parts of WooCommerce, uh, from hosting to performance to scalability to, uh, you know, we even have sessions that are ancillary to that. So we just had a, we just had a, uh, an episode we did about, uh, the contributor, uh, onboarding tool that's now on the make blog for, uh, WordPress so that you can determine what teams might be a good fit for you as an individual to start contributing to WordPress. Uh, so that was a great, uh, a great episode, but we do, we tend to focus more on the developer side of WooCommerce. So if you're interested in, you know, learning more about those things about scaling and, uh, really just diving into the deep complexity of you know, what I do day to day, what Carl does day to day to day, um, we bring on guests that talk about that stuff. Uh, I believe our next episode, we have 
uh, Ben from Rocket.net and Tom from Convesio talking about uh, hosting difficult WooCommerce sites. Oh my goodness. Now, since I know both Ben and Tom very well, uh, both the founders of their respective hosting companies, so Convesio and Rocket, uh, that should be great, except they're both from Florida. So I know uh, if anything goes wrong, you know, they can each drive to each other's house. <laughs> the the trouble with hosting difficult sites is going to be a fantastic um, topic to cover. And in my experience, what's interesting about those is they, they have a few similarities, but the rest of it is like, they're just radically different in terms of what makes them difficult, right? Like, yeah, they're big, uh, but they're all big in different ways. Like one has a ton of SKUs that they manage. One is managing a ton of order volume. One has right. to do with lots of rebuilding and re uh, and subscription renewals and things like that. And so they all, they all face different problems for their bigness. Uh, so, 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 so Zach and I can definitely speak to, to uh, an experience and we'll just leave it at that uh, where they had uh, huge spurts. Like, you know, it'd be like two days out of every, you know, four or five months and you know how you manage that kind of instantaneous traffic madness uh is hard and and it's it's different than it's even different than like the folks that are worried about black friday who you can plan for those specific days you know months ahead of time and how we're going to optimize our services you know optimize landing pages optimize you know server utilization all that kind of fun stuff when it's sort of those spikes happen uh almost um, you know, unknowingly that, that that's a fun challenge. Yeah. So a uh, question from the audience, Bet is wondering, when is this episode going to air, Zach? Do you have a, a rough estimate? Is it next week, two weeks later this It'll month? It'll be the end of November. We record the fourth week uh, of every month. So we just released uh, an episode or uh, should, I'm sorry, it should be the end of October. Um, because we will we'll record the week the after we record. Yeah, it's always the week after we record. So it'll be the end of October, not November. Let me correct myself in Slack as well. Amazing. And that's if great. You have a topic, uh, one of the things that's great about Do the Woo is we are open to feedback from our listeners in, in a way that most podcasts aren't. So if you have an idea for a topic or you want to, Come and join us on on a Woo Dev chat and talk about uh, something that you've done. Um, definitely reach out to us through the website at do the Woo .com or dot io. Do the Woo .io. .io. Yep, and uh, you know, come come let us know what you want to share or what you want to talk about. Uh, we have a number of shows, uh, and it's only going to be growing. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll have lots of fun things to talk about in the future. Um, and I see Bob typing, probably uh -oh. telling me to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have a ton of different types of shows, and you can you can find us uh, everywhere you find your your favorite podcasts. Um, and you know, just like we've been pushing everyone to jump on the Woo Sesh Slack. You know, same with the do the loose slack. I, there, there is so much that goes on. And, you know, to Zach's point, you can reach out to all the hosts, even Bob. Bob doesn't sleep, so feel free to ping him all the time. Um, whoops, now I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, now now but, that he, you know, now that he has uh, crossed the pond, he's just awake all the time, right? That, that's right. So, you know, start at 9 a.m., you know. Uh, Eastern European time and keep going till 9 p.m. Pacific time, right? You know, yeah. a good 20 hour day is what Bob needs in his life. The interesting, you know, any, any over, hey, oh, Brian, don't think we're leaving out. Any overflow should just go straight to you. So don't, don't worry about falling asleep either. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. I was going to say the interesting thing about that is those are the hours that Bob has always kept. It has yeah, nothing to do much. with where he is physically in the world. He's just incapable of sleeping more than four hours a day and so he's just that's that's how he's been able to stay on top of so many breaking stories over the past 15 years really it's it's the life of being in uh woo and wordpress <laughs> <laughs> pretty much so um 
I need to get you guys out of here because you have other schedules that you're keeping. I could keep the conversation going for ages, but uh, that would be rude because I also know the audience has other things that they have planned to do today besides just <laughs> hang out with they're, us. They're getting ready and rested for tomorrow. What do we have on that agenda, Brian? Yeah, we have a bunch of amazing talks coming up tomorrow. Um, and I have to look over here instead of right at my teleprompter because I forgot to put those notes up there. Uh, but tomorrow we have, uh, what, eight sessions, technically. Uh, a More Human Touch Through Robots with Yob Thomas. Landing Page Launchpad, Making Your Page a Cell with Kathy Zant. Uh, both of them are talking about AI and how to incorporate it into what you're doing. Uh, then Krupalakia is going to talk about how we can balance personalization and privacy. This desire to make our websites as catered to our audience without exposing all of their personal identifiable information to all of the different companies that want to try to help you with this first part. And we uh, call that PII. PII. That's exactly right. Which is, again, would, would love for us to all memorize that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the middle of the day, uh, Omar Sadoti is going to teach us about a better way to pay. And he's also brought a guest, uh, Jeff Gleason. And we're going to get a little bit of a case study there on how Amazon Pay, along with multiple payment options, really made an incredible transformation to USA Berkey filters, where Jeff runs operations. Uh, and then after that, uh, Vito Surratt is going to talk about how he and his compatriot transformed the mattress business in Latin America, which is a really cool case study as well. So we've got back-to-back interesting case studies. Then Krish Iyer is going to talk to us about shipping trends from the past year and how we can better cater to customers and create a better experience for both store owners and customers as we go. And then we'll have another recap with different hosts from Do The Woo, along with some interesting Do The Woo news that we couldn't exactly break today, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, um, the stuff that Bob was typing a lot, but, talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to have to do a, sh a huge shout out. She's going to kill me. I love Kathy Zane. I can't wait for her session tomorrow. Um, yeah. Really She's amazing. Star of that. Everyone should really uh, uh, check in on. Yeah. So uh, let me roll into some of my closing notes here before we shut things down. And I'll come back over to you guys to get some parting words of wisdom from you. So first of all, thank you to everyone in the audience for attending today. We are so glad you're here. We'd otherwise just be talking to our screens. We could have fun talking to each other here just fine, but it's all the more special to know that you're out there and enjoying things with us. Um, but before I uh, kick you all out and say thanks for being here, <laughs> let me bring our guests back up on screen. Uh, Zach, Robert, maybe I'll have you go first. Any other parting words for our audience here? I'd like to say that Wu is moving faster and better than I had uh, ever expected. So I'm, I'm very excited about sort of the pivots and shifts that have happened in Wu and that it will be driving a huge economy. So kudos to everyone who's attending. Uh, you're ahead of the curve by being at Wu Sesh. Indeed, yep. I agree. I, I, How about you, Zach? What do you, you want to... I concur Department. with everything that he said, but I also want to use this opportunity to tell our community that if you are using plugins that say they're not compatible with high performance order storage, when you go to your, your WooCommerce system report, contact those developers and tell them that they're not compatible with high, with high performance order storage. If you're writing code and you're still reaching directly into post meta to get things, stop doing that. Learn how to do it in a way that's compatible with high performance order storage, and uh, yeah, I think that is uh, that is my message for all of you at the end of today. And, and that's why Zach runs the do the move tech side of the universe, and why I run the other <laughs> side. <laughs> well, I could not agree more with both of those sentiments, and especially the fact that you each serve different roles, and it's very obvious why. Uh, each of you are in your own different corners. So uh, on that note, I think uh, it is time for me to bid you all adieu. Thank you, Robert and Zach, for joining us here today. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Brian. 
Thank you for yeah. having us. Really appreciate it. Love the opportunity. Yeah. Me too. Uh, and thank you, dear audience members, for, for watching. Thank you to all of our incredible sponsors for making this possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you. Uh, and dear attendees, uh, it is because of them that we get to run this event and enjoy it all together. So uh, it's been a blast. On that note, have an amazing evening, afternoon, rest of your day, wherever you happen to be. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Well, I hope you enjoyed the first recap and are ready for day two and three in the next couple of days. I'd like to give a special shout out to our partner, WooCommerce, who brings not only Stay the Woo to Woo Sashi Cheer, but also supports Brian's efforts for presenting this online event for Woo Builders. So that's it for today. Join us again tomorrow for the next recap. <laughs>